which leads me to, to my former remarks. I shrank when my telephone came in. How fortunate are we to live in a community that has at its heart a school like the Columbus Torah Academy? I remind you of the priorities set for us by Yaakov Avinu Jacob, our patriarch, in terms of establishing Jewish communities. Yaakov, Jacob, in preparing for his family's move to Goshen, sent Yehuda, Judah, on ahead, as Rashi explains, to establish a school. The new Jewish community could not exist for even a day without having a school to teach children. It had to be there for them when they arrived. Now, for sure, there are many institutions that are vital to the existence of the Jewish community. But Yaakov Avinu, our patriarch, wanted to establish precedent. Jewish education is primary if Jewish life is to flourish. As we meet today to celebrate this magnificent renovation and to welcome new leadership, we must express our sincere gratitude to Jerome Schottenstein of Blessed Memory and his founding partners, all great men, like Dr. Marvin Fox, Harry and Dr. Ivan Gilbert, Joe Nickel, Frank Dudas, Dr. Charles Young, Rabbi David Stavsky, and Leon and Alan Schottenstein of Blessed Memory who shared Jerome's vision and values in establishing the school at a period of time when day schools were not an ubiquitous fixture on the American Jewish scene. The vision of the founders of a Torah school that is open and welcoming to Jewish families and children from across the spectrum of Columbus Jewry, a school that values diversity and models inclusiveness, a school that sees general studies and excellence in all areas of the curriculum as a Torah mandate, a school that is unabashedly Zionist, that proclaims to the world that the Dinat Yisrael is Reishit Smichat Yilatenu, the fruition of prophecy and part of God's plan for the Jewish people, a school that appreciates the blessings of American democracy, that this self-same vision held by the founders is the same as the vision that guides us today, 56 years later, is a testament to the founders' visionary influence that continues to inform how we educate our children today and into the future. Yaakov's priorities, however, were more than priorities, they were prophecy. In setting his priorities, he foresaw that his progeny would face challenges throughout Jewish history, and the only thing that would preserve us as a people was Jewish education. Today, American Jewry faces a tsunami of assimilation. In a society that is exceedingly open and welcoming, ever-increasing numbers of Jews are being swept away. They are rejecting their heritage and abandoning the Jewish people. The most effective bulwark standing against this tsunami is a day school education. This is not my opinion, but rather these are the findings of a famous Ali Chai study. The study found that a high school education in the Jewish day school high school promotes marrying within the faith, higher synagogue, affiliation and attendance, and greater giving to communal causes, among other measures. The figures are dramatic, and I will share with you but a few. 15% of adults with no Jewish education belong to a synagogue. Those with up to eight years of Jewish education affiliate at a rate of 35%. Adults with a high school education affiliate at a rate of 58%. The increase of 23%, that huge jump, occurs between the 9th and the 10th grade. Similarly, 1% of Jews with no Jewish education make an annual gift of $1,000 a year to Jewish causes. At eight years, it rises to 5%. 13% of Jews with at least a 9th grade Jewish education give a gift of $1,000 or more. In terms of communal allocation of funds to promote the long-term salubrity of Jewish community, community leadership needs to know that adults educated in Jewish day school high schools are 13 times more likely to contribute $1,000 or more to a Jewish cause than their counterparts who give at a dramatically lower level. The most important indicator, assimilation through intermarriage, indicates that what up to eight years, we won't talk about anything less than that, but up to eight years of a day school education, the chances are only 50-50 that your child will marry a Jew. With a high school education, your child's chances of marrying another Jew rise to about three out of four. 
You need not have studied statistics to appreciate the difference in those odds. The message is clear. If we want our grandchildren to be Jewish, we must give our children a Jewish education. Not through the fourth grade, not through the eighth grade, but through high school. This brings us back to why we are here this morning. We celebrate today the accomplishments of an institution that is unique within our community. We celebrate its continuity and its renewal. Columbus Torah Academy is the only institution in our city that allows a little Jewish boy or girl to enter kindergarten as a tablas rasa and emerge 13 years later as a young adult, most likely to marry Jewish, belong to a synagogue, and be financially supportive of Jewish causes. At this time of transition, I would like to take a moment to talk about the future. Jim Collins, in his book, Good to Great, writes that the greatest enemy of great is good. I'll repeat that, the greatest enemy of great is good. Many companies and institutions do not reach their potential because they're satisfied with being good. In order to achieve greatness, companies and institutions must want to constantly get better, never to rest upon their laurels. It is this attitude that I discerned among CPA's leadership, both lay and professional, that helped me decide to cast my lot with this school. Over the coming year, a number of growth initiatives will take place that will promote striving for greatness in all we do. As an institution, we have already adopted what Carol Dweck, the noted Stanford psychologist, calls a growth mindset. Our professional growth activities have begun and will center on challenging ourselves and our students not to reach our potential, not to reach our potential, which is finite, but to create our potential, which is infinite. Now these remarks were written early last week and our staff uh, experienced some professional growth almost a month ago. But in yesterday's Wall Street Journal, and I urge you to find the article if you're an interested consumer and want to make sure that your children are getting the right instruction, there's an article, Four Ways to Spot a Great Teacher. And one of the ways is, believe intelligence is achievable, not inborn. Effective educators reject the idea that smarts are something that only some students have. They expect all children to perform at a high level, even those who are unruly, learning disabled, or struggling with English. We do not yet know how great we can be, how great our children can be, but we plan to find out. We will promote a framework of teaching that stresses those aspects of teachers' responsibilities that have been documented through empirical studies and theoretical research as promoting improved student learning. We will effectively use a wide range of technology tools to promote digital literacy that supports the learning and engagement of students. We will focus on the four C's, communication, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking, skills that will prepare our students for the complex life and work environment of the 21st century. Children learn by doing. We're planning a series of out of the classroom learning experiences that include Shabbatonian, camping trips, and public service and FESIC projects that will enable our children to learn from real life experience. We will also engage our parents in learning so that they too can be role models. They can demonstrate to their children that learning is a lifelong endeavor. On the drawing board is a family shot of tone that will allow a spirit of community and fellowship to flourish among Tor Academy parents. I've gone on long enough. I do want, however, to take a moment to thank our immediate past president, Daniel Chase, and our cousin president, Gary Blumberg, for their yeoman's work during this transition period. I also want to thank Marsha Hirschfield for chairing the search committee. I want to thank Michael Brody, who uh, was the first live person that I met. Everything else was over the phone. Um, he came to see me in Boca Raton. And Michael uh, was a great ambassador for this community, presented the opportunities that were here. And probably if it hadn't been for Michael, we wouldn't be here this morning. At least we wouldn't be here with me. I also want to thank, on a personal note, if we were doing Robert's Rules, I would rise to a point of personal privilege uh, to thank Jay and Jeannie Schottenstein and Joey and Lindsay Schottenstein. We had a beautiful home waiting for us when we arrived here, uh, and my wife and I are, are very grateful to them for their part in making us so comfortable. Uh, really, may all may ever above and beyond. It is the month of Bella when we stand at the brink of a new year. May God bless the work of our hands, 
and maybe be spectacularly successful in meeting the needs of our students in the year ahead. Be Bible, Kumato, God.